my celestial friends, I'm Echo, the Saving Sorceress, and today I thought I'd make a cozy little video, a sew with me, if you will, while I make some warm capelets for the bridesmaids in my friend's wedding. Come join me. My best friends in the whole world is getting married and she made me a bridesmaid I am so excited she entrusted me to create some little capes to keep us bridesmaids warm because honestly those bridesmaid dresses were not made for winter weather we've got to have something to make sure our shoulders don't turn to ice we chose a luxurious and cozy fleece fabric to make them so I'm hoping that they turn out well fingers crossed let's get started so we're about to start on the capelet and here is the fabric that we're working with that I mentioned it is so soft and cozy it's got like a fuzzy layer, sort of like sheep's wool on the inside, and the outside is nice and smooth and classy looking. <laughs> so, ugh. I tried to get a fabric that won't shed so much. This one sheds a little bit, but I'm gonna do what I can to try to get all the little pieces off before it has to go over the dresses because we don't want any unfortunate moments. I think it'll be fine though. We'll get them off here, and once we're wearing our fancy dresses and our fancy little capelets, we'll be just fashionable. That's pretty decent. Pretty decent already. Then I just want to sort of get an idea of how it will fit. Don't mind the pieces flying off, but yeah, I think this will be cute. I'm gonna cut it around so it's sort of even using my handy dandy duct tape mannequin. I'll tell you a whole lot about this little baby in a few weeks. I have a video coming out that will talk all about the pros and cons of duct tape mannequins and how you can make one for yourself. She's gonna help me out a lot because it is very hard to make things, especially capes, on yourself. You know, there's a lot to work with. In this case, I've got many yards of fabric to deal with because I'm making three capelets for all the bridesmaids. I am not really familiar with making clothes for other people much. I've helped my mom and my brother and my dad uh, fix their clothes up before and I think I might have made a few things for them. So cross your fingers for me. I, I think I can get this. I think I can do this. I've got these really cool clasps that I am so excited to work with. I think they will look really good on this. One of my main tasks is figuring out where it should go for optimal beauty and classiness and just making sure it actually fits around everyone in a nice, attractive, and warm way. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can figure that out. So this is kind of what I'm aiming for and I will put the clasp somewhere around here Honestly, you could make a full cape with this, which would be awesome, but possibly a bit over dramatic, especially since we're the bridesmaids and people are supposed to be looking at the bride, not us. Now, I want to keep this project low so, so I'm trying not to do too much that will involve a lot of work because I'm under a bit of a time crunch right now. I don't really have time to make a really elaborate cape. I would like to, but you know, you gotta be realistic. It's very hard for me, but I'm trying. Yeah, I'm thinking of folding it over a bit like this, at least in parts of the cape, for an added stylish touch and perhaps to even keep it from shutting a little bit. So this goes like that, this goes like that. Could we maybe sew the clasp on and then fold it over here? Maybe. Things like this, they always take a lot of measuring and time which they don't always look like they do. I feel like people sometimes they don't really respect and understand how long it takes to make clothing in general. All of our clothes, even the ones that aren't, you know, handmade by artisans, all of our clothes are handmade by someone. And that's one of the reasons I think that respecting all of our clothes is so important because someone's hands worked on this. Someone's hands took the time to create this and it's it's worth valuing their contribution. So on my original measurements, 
on my friend. The clasp hit roughly around right here. So my main thing is do I go super crazy with deciding exactly how it's gonna fit on each bridesmaid? Or do I just do the same thing for all three of us and hope for the best? Questions? I guess we'll find out. I'm probably going to use this beautiful lady over here to figure out what I wanna do. So on my friend, I put the clasp 38 centimeters up. I know I could work with inches being an American, but I found that centimeters are more precise, so I usually use those for my sewing. But that does calculate to around 15 or so inches, in case you'd like to make one for yourself. Just kind of want to pin it in place to see what it will look like. I think it might be sort of a challenge to sew this, to be honest, because there is a lot of fabric to go through. This is really thick stuff. It's going to feel really nice, but sewing thick fabric is always a bit of an experience. Do, 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 do. Where did all my pins go? Did you ever have that problem? You've been working on way too many projects and not finishing all those projects and now you're out of pins because you keep on doing it. I have that problem a lot. I'm probably in the process of working on about uh, 30 projects. Honestly, it's one of the reasons I started this channel. I'm hoping that this channel will encourage me to work on finishing those projects because I've got to have something to film and put up for everyone, right? That needs to happen. I definitely need some encouragement to get this stuff done. Let's see. Distant. I hope this hits everyone. Let's see. What do you think? I like it. Hopefully it looks the same on a human being. We'll find out probably when I finish it. But I think it's looking pretty cute. So now my task is to find out how long these need to be. I want it to go roughly from here all the way around the back. I have a bit over three yards here, three and a half, I believe, because I wanted some extra wiggle room because when you're adding something that ends up having to be rounded, even though it looks kind of straight from the front, you need the extra wiggle room, especially when you're making something that has to matter for other people. <laughs> you want other people to be able to look at it and say, oh, this is nice, and not, oh my gosh, what did you do to mine? It's gonna take some figuring. Sewing takes a whole lot of math. It's a challenge, but honestly, I love what you end up with. You can create such magical things. I decided to use these cute little clips that I've got because they're much better for holding the fabric together. When you've got this thick of fabric that you're dealing with, you need to get out the heavy duty option. I think it's time for my chalk. I never realized how useful sewing chalk is until I watched Bernadette Banner's videos and she uses it all the time. And I started noticing other people who so use them. I'm self-taught for the most part, so I had no idea tools like this existed, but it's incredible. It's perfect for marking where I need to sew or cut, and I get it right a lot more often now. I think that's always a good thing. Now I think it's about time to go ahead and take this off the mannequin, figure out where we marked it, and see if we've got a good place to cut. And then we get to do the scariest part of the whole process, cutting the fabric. Does anybody else get really, really terrified when they have to cut into some fabric, especially expensive fabric? It'll all be all right, right? Send help. That's always my least favorite part of any project. It's so scary. I know it's easy for some people, but for me, I'm just like, oh no, I'm gonna get it wrong. I measure like 40 times. Sometimes I still get it wrong. We humans, we aren't perfect. I think it's gonna be okay. Yeah, we'll see. I realized before I cut it, I should probably try it out on myself first. I mean, sure, the mannequin is basically my measurements, but you know. We want to make sure we're not making any mistakes. It would be terrible to cut into something that fits the mannequin perfectly and find out that it doesn't work for a human being. 
It's a good length for my arms. I want to be able to keep them cozy. All right, let's try to cut. When I first got into sewing as a kid, I would never have believed you if you had told me I'd spend this much time on the floor, but it's honestly the only way to do it. When you're dealing with yards of fabric, there's just no tabletop that's big enough. So the floor it is. Don't mind all of the lovely pieces of fabric that have fallen off. I'm sure there'll be more by the time we're finished with this. Okay, let's get started. First, we're going to measure where we pinned it and where we marked it, just to make sure we're not going to be using too much fabric for each one. If I had more time, I would have made a mock-up, which is always a good idea, and something else I learned from watching loads of people do this. I was always doing it freehand. I don't even use patterns, which is crazy to a lot of people, but when you're self-taught, Sometimes you learn how to do things in a really roundabout way. I do not recommend. Make a mock-up if you can. So yeah, I highly recommend using the colorful clips instead of the pins because the pins kept falling out and the clips are actually staying in, yay! And I can see them against the black fabric, which is a huge plus. And now I can see that this is a whole semicircle, which when I measure it, turns out to be a little bit bigger than a yard, which is really, really, really important knowledge to have because I didn't know that that was going to happen. Luckily, we got the extra fabric, so thank you past me and my friends for having the foresight to realize that we needed more than just three yards for the three different capelets. I suspected that it might end up being a semicircle, and you gotta have that extra fabric. You know, I wanna do a good job the first time around, especially when I'm making it for other people, and I don't want them to be like, uh, thanks? I want them to be like, oh, yeah, this is great. I can use this, and we'll use it again. I just need to make sure that I get a pretty even circle going, so I'll use my chalk for that. Okay, let's not waste any time. I will use my pins here because we don't have that many clips left over because, again, they're being used for other projects. I really need to finish something. <laughs> but I'll be finishing this, hopefully today. I wish I had more of these really big pins. They're a little easier to see when you're dealing with a bunch of sharp objects. If it's easier to see, you're in good hands. If it's hard to see, you won't see it till it's too late. No one ever tells you that there's gonna be so much blood involved in sewing either, but that's something you also find out after a lot of experience. Aha! Uh -huh. That doesn't make any sense at all. This is why we measure. Why is there such a huge difference between this side and that side? Why? All right, let's measure again. made a different mistake. I'll try measuring the other stuff and we'll see how that goes. Well, that explains it. This is a completely different amount of fabric than this. The clips are in totally different places. I need to do some thinking. I think if I make this measurement closer to that one, it works better. So we're going to do that. And honestly, when you're cutting, if you're not entirely sure of the measurements and you have the fabric, always cut more off for your piece because you can always trim the fabric. It's a lot harder to add fabric back in once you've trimmed it. Now, if this one ends up looking bad, I'll just use it for myself and make nicer ones for the other two. <laughs> Hopefully the other two won't take as much work because I can just use this one as a guide and cut and pin and sew those just like this one. I usually take about three weeks per project, so a one night project is not something that I'm used to. We all learn by doing, and I'm learning by doing everything right now. <laughs> I think this might work. I'm gonna cut it. It's happening!
the moment of truth. Try it on and see what it looks like. Also, I will attempt to not get stabbed by any pins. Oh, look at how fuzzy this floor is. This will be fun to clean up. <laughs> I will try it on in a more official capacity when I'm near completion, but you know. It's always good to try things on in the middle of your project just to make sure you're on the right track. I mean, honestly, this is super cozy. It's very much like wearing a blanket, and I'm a big fan. I might have to lower the clasp a little bit just to make sure that everyone can fit it comfortably. You don't want to be feeling like you're being choked. That's not an appropriate wedding activity during the wedding. This feels very good. I feel a bit like a bat. And honestly, I don't want to take it off because it's cold and it's very blankety. I probably look kind of silly in my bridesmaid's dress and my braids and hat, but you know what? We're just gonna go with it. I thought I would try this on with the dress just to make sure that it looks right. Way. How do I look? I think it looks kind of fancy. I like it. All of us bridesmaids have different dresses for this wedding, just the same color, but different styles, so it'd be nice to show off a little bit of what's going on underneath for each one of our dresses and still stay cozy. I think it's time to get to sewing. I think I'm going to sew this one completely first because I've always found that if you have to make multiples of something, it's good to finish one project completely so that you know what you did wrong and then you can edit it and figure out how to fix all your problems on the next ones because honestly nobody's perfect nobody knows how to do something absolutely perfectly the first time even the experts take apart their old projects to make them better new location i have to say if you do any sort of sewing or fabric crafting where you need to sit on the floor for a long time i highly recommend having a bed as your workspace. There's just something so much more comfortable and cozy about working on a bed. You do have to watch out for needles though, so don't drop any of them on your bed. All right, I am gonna begin getting to work with actually sewing these little frog closures, the clasps, onto this lovely little capelet. And I'm excited to get it done and see what it looks like. So right now, I am pinning this together to keep the amount of edging that I want. Just to, you know, add a little bit of a festive touch without taking too much of the warmth away or overwhelming the whole project. So I'm going for three centimeters, a little over an inch of sort of trim. I'm not doing any major sewing for that because that could be time consuming. And this is going to be a nice quick project, fingers crossed. So I'm just gonna measure in three different places to tack it down, keep it from moving while we work on the project. Filming in the darkness against darkness, which is honestly just every part of my life. Darkness against darkness, it's a challenge. But you know, I'm a night owl. Everything is darkness with me always night. That's the way I like it. I think I'll sew each little loop onto the capelet separately just to make it easier to change things if I need to fiddle with it a little bit or move it up or down a little bit. And also because if I sew it separately I can make sure that it won't be as easy to take off. We don't want it ripping off in the middle of the wedding in a dramatic moment. And suddenly there's screams from the audience and screams from the girl wearing it who is suddenly freezing. I actually don't even think we'll be wearing this during the wedding, but you know, it'd be dramatic. If you want to avoid extra drama in my friend's wedding, she deserves better than that. So I am sewing it. <laughs> I've sewn the very back now, and we're gonna go for this side, right here. I'm starting the thread in between the two layers just so it's totally hidden. Perfect. And then 
I'm just looping over the edge and sewing back in place all the way through both layers this time because we do want to secure it down so we don't have to sew as much later when we tack down the rest for the decorative edge. I'm not sure how much you can really see because again, sewing black fabric on video is not the uh, most clear. It's kind of impossible to tell what anyone's doing, <laughs> but that's always an issue because making things out of black fabric is my favorite. I'm pretty much always wearing black with maybe some color, but black I feel like it's just, it goes with everything and it's my color. Now, I have run into this issue twice before, I think because the fabric is so furry and fuzzy, the thread gets a little bit no, you really can't see that. But the thread gets a little bit caught on some of the fuzz, I think, and it just refuses at all to go all the way through. So I'm doing my best to avoid that, but it is a little bit of an issue. You have no power here, extra thread. I will wrestle you back into the spot that you belong. And there we are. It's all sewn on. I might put the other ones a little bit further back into the fabric, but um, we'll see how this one looks. You know, as I said, we can always improve, but I'm pretty excited about it so far. Yep, that should work perfectly. Now to sew the other side. So, what do you think? I'm very pleased with how it turned out. Um, I still need to hem these which I think I will see if I can do by machine. I may have to hand tack it down, I don't know. We'll see what makes the most sense. I am very excited to wear this for the wedding. And now on to my next project, which will be hemming the groom's pants. I'm not gonna do a full hem. I'm just tacking the hem inside because we don't have a lot of time here. But I think that I can do that as well. And all set for this wedding oh my gosh this is so incredibly cozy it really is like wearing a blanket I will use this a million times after the wedding just for cozy warmth for sure I can't wait I'm working on the groom's pants now I will be doing little stitches to hold the hem in place and I probably won't show you the whole process for this but I will be showing you what I got now. Nice little folded over edge and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. And now we've got an invisible hem. I love invisible things. Normally I would be cutting a hole here for the neck but it makes a sort of furry kind of neck ruff which I really like, and it will probably keep our necks pretty warm. Sort of like wearing a scarf, so I'm gonna leave it there. That way it won't shed any pieces either, and I don't have to hem it because it's pretty stable for now. So I made a capelet a few years ago, and I just wanted to compare the two capelets and see what I'm working with. Uh, this one's going to be an awful lot bigger, it looks like, which is perfect since we need to stay warm. And my other one was mostly just decorative. But I think I'm going to work on the shape of the new one. It's not quite as even as I'd like it to be, and I want it to be a bit more rounded. Obviously, I can't be a perfectionist here. That's my usual go-to. That's pretty much my personality, but I don't have a ton of time, so I have to focus and just get it done, because we want to get the other two done as well, and I need a model so I can copy it. I will take you along with me to go ahead and sew a little bit of it. All right, about to use this one as a model and cut out my second one. Wish me luck. And here is the finished product. I love the way it turned out. 
Let me know in the comments what you created lately. And also, would you ever want to try making something like these? If you enjoyed this video, please add a like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more videos like this about sewing and thrifting, plants, witchy life, and saving things. I will not be back next week because I have a wedding to go to. But I'll be back the week after that, so see you pretty soon. And remember, my celestial friends, save and embrace every chance that you have to help out your friends. Be kind to yourself and to the universe, and try to add a little bit of magic wherever possible to your corner of the world. Bye. Oh my gosh, I just heard the scariest sound outside, and I had to go check on what it was because I thought someone was like breaking in, I don't even know. And so I walked into a dark room to go look out the window and forgot that I had moved the furniture. That's a terrible idea, and my legs are covered in bruises. It was painful. <laughs> so I'm safe with the <laughs> Who the hell is that? And the measurements, I... <laughs> Pretty helpful. Helpful. There's something green on here. Why is there something green on here and why is it coming out? Let's move it down a little bit. Why, why, why is my hair a mess every time? Every single day it's a mess. Every day it's a mess.